day six. Um, I just got back from a church. Um, I run the, um, or I handle the live stream that we do every Sunday. So that is why we are attending church in person. Um, masks on, everything, social distancing, it's responsible. Um, so this is why, also why I'm dressed in my face, <laughs> my librarian outfit with my collar and my cardigan of course um so this morning i'd already opened up the advent <laughs> scheme but i didn't show you guys um so i'm gonna do that now and it is probably my favorite skein so far we're only uh six skeins in and it's this one it's professor lupin and it is the most beautiful collection of colors and a great representation of my favorite character in prisoner of azkaban professor lupin i mean how could you not love him um we got purples and pinks and yellows and like ugh, i just love this aesthetic it's my favorite i think and we got a little wolf progress keeper because as we know he is a wet wolf spoiler alert but i think it's absolutely gorgeous uh, so i can't wait to get into that uh, i think i am going to ball up these skeins maybe i still i have them hanging right here but i think i might ball them up um, today or tomorrow and get started on that um, habitation throw. Maybe we'll see how things go. But just wanted to show you guys. Uh, just look at it again. I can't stop looking at it. It's so pretty. Um, all right. So uh, my plan is to see my family later today. They live just a couple minutes down the road. Uh, but I am going to make those gluten-free cookies first. <laughs> I've been talking about them and it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna do that today. And I think that might be it. Um, other than catching up on some Vlogmas videos, it's just what I'm gonna do today. All right, I will let you go and I will talk to you later. All right, I figured I would fulfill my childhood dream of being a Food Network <laughs> commentator and uh, record myself making these gluten-free cookies for the first time. Um, so I guess I'll get things started. I'm going off of a recipe here on my laptop. Uh, so in the medium bowl, whisk together gluten-free flour, baking powder, and salt. All right, so we'll get started. So, little background on my baking experience, I guess. Um, I, if you can't tell, or if I didn't, if I didn't mention before, uh, I was homeschooled. Surprising. <laughs> the girl who knits was homeschooled, or has been, or the girl who has been knitting for 13 years was homeschooled. Uh, so. I had a lot of free time, so I did. A, I had a lot of time baking. For a while, I was making a lot of cupcakes. I would make at least like two batches of cupcakes every week, and for a while, my parents had to be like, "Okay, you need to stop." Like, number one, this is so freaking expensive because you're picking like you're making like the most expensive like like chocolate covered ganache like type of um like expensive cupcakes like you need to stop with that and it's making all of us fat so like we need to cool it on the um the cupcake making um so i did a lot of baking in the past uh, for a while i thought that was what i was going to go into was cooking and then i worked in a kitchen and then i decided no not for me um that's our flour one teaspoon and a half of baking powder. So I don't cook or bake or whatever as often as I used to. Like I just have, you know, different hobbies now, obviously. Um, and I'm not 
the greatest at it. Some things I'm good at, other things like it just isn't, I'm just out of practice, I guess. And of course, this one of salt, which I should get better at. Um, I'm really good at uh, ordering food out <laughs> and um, doing that. I'm really good at ordering food and eating it, um, which isn't good for a gluten-free diet. I mean, there's a couple options here in the town that I live in, like, and it's basically you get poke or sushi and a plia bowl or like a smoothie bowl. But both of those, like a bowl could be like minimum $11. And like that isn't very cost effective. Um, so there's, there's our dry ingredients. Um, so yeah, I just need to get better. I have plenty of gluten-free cookbooks and I know the internet obviously is a great resource, but I just get lazy. You know, at the end of the day, I don't want to make a meal. Like it's not as fun for me as it used to be. All right. So in a large mixing bowl, um, beat butter and granulated sugar together on medium high until creamed. 12 tablespoons, so a stick and a half of butter. Do you guys like to cook and bake? Um, or is that something that you leave up to, you know, someone else in your family or are you like supporting small businesses <laughs> by um, ordering food from restaurants? Um, are you a foodie like I am? Uh, I'm a major foodie. I love food so much, despite you know, not being a very good cook. <laughs> um, do you guys like to bake around the holidays? Um, I never really, the only thing like I cooked around the holidays was um, sides for Christmas because um, every year, we're not doing it this year, but every year my family hosts a big Christmas party and um, we've been doing so ever since I can remember. And uh, as I got older, it was my job to make a majority of the sides. So my go-to side and what I'm known for <laughs> is um, pineapple bake which is basically crushed pineapple, bread, sugar, butter, eggs, vanilla. <laughs> That's what you get in pineapple bake. Um, and it goes really good with ham, which is what we have every year. I would do that. I would do uh, Swiss vegetable medley, um, just a bunch of different sides. So I have to use my electric mixer, my hand mixer, because I don't have a stand in mixer. I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to watch me do this for a minute. open an egg with one hand, but not anymore. I thought I was badass cracking open an egg with one hand. Like, look at me, I'm so cool. Not anymore, I don't have that skill. Just use the rest of this vanilla. Are you a follow things to a T sort of baker? Or are you like, I'll eyeball it? Um, depending on what it is. Like with vanilla, I always tend to eyeball it. Uh, so, all right, mix again for another minute. All right, so there's our wet ingredients. Looks like cookie dough. Um, and then we're gonna add our dry ingredients throughout this whole thing. So let's see how coordinated I am. Next 
some buttermilk. So I did not get buttermilk, but I have this leftover milk and I poured some um, vinegar in it because that works as a good substitute apparently. So I need two tablespoons of that. because that'll just destroy them. There weren't any Christmas um, sprinkles at my grocery store, so I had these pretty, they're colorful rainbow ones. They'll do the trick, I guess. sugar cookies, by the way, I realize I never <laughs> uh, mentioned that. morning everyone it is Monday December 7th and um, it's a very gloomy morning today it's about 7 30 normally the Sun is up and it's bright but today for some reason it's a little gloomy and sad um, which is fine whatever <laughs> just one of those days um, I have taken off for the day uh, this was planned uh, today is my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Michaela! And um, I'm gonna hang out with her today. And we're just gonna hang out and relax and enjoy a nice, uh, quiet Monday. Um, I did not end up making those gluten-free cookies last night. <laughs> um, I ended up leaving in the afternoon and just deciding, you know what, they can be cooked another time. Um, I'm not as chaotic as I present. <laughs> like, normally, I th those cookies would have been cooked. And, um, you know, normally, if I set a goal for myself and I say I'm going to do something, I do it. This past week, or last week, was just one of those weird weeks where I just felt really off. And, um, I don't know. You, you, you know, you understand. You have those weeks where, you know, you feel off, don't feel quite right, like you make all these intentions and it doesn't work out, you're stressed out all the time over uh, seemingly small stuff, like just one of those things. Um, so anyway, um, let's get to day number seven of, of our Prisoner of Azkaban Advent. And I just learned just to rip it at this point. They do a good job packing it. Ooh, drop something? No. This is Professor uh, 
Trelawney. I feel awful for not being able to say that, but you know, that one professor who's like, uh, in the, um, tea leaves reading class. I can't remember what class that, that was. Uh, well, the lady with the big glasses. But this fits her personality very well. I like it a lot. It's very cute. Um, so I don't know if I put in the disaster that was my, um, ball weaving or cake making of these little skeins. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was a mess. Like, everything was going okay. They kept sliding off these little guys. Um, because they're so small. Um, and then the one, one of my skeins, was a scabbers skein, like, completely came off and I tried fixing it and it, it was a knotted mess. <laughs> so that was really frustrating. Um, but I got that taken care of. I skeined them up or caked them up. My goodness. I caked up the yarn and I, pardon me, I started the, um, the blanket, the, uh, habitation throw. Um, I'm only like this much in, <laughs> but, um, I'm enjoying it so far. It's an interesting pattern. Um, so we will see how it goes. So I'm gonna cake this one up as well, or at least put it in a ball and, um, I'll add it to the collection. Um, so I might take you throughout the day today. We'll see how it goes. Um, my sister said she's going to make, she's going to do pancakes and Prosecco this morning. <laughs> um, like I said, I might talk to you throughout the day and, um, I will see you later. Hey guys, it is later in the day. Um, I didn't end up going over to my family's house this morning and had breakfast with my sister. Um, and then I decided to go back home because I had been dealing with a migraine all morning and medicine wasn't helping, unfortunately. So I decided to come home, take a break. I've been knitting all morning or, or all afternoon. Um, I watched uh, When Harry Met Sally because I just like wanted a feel good movie to <laughs> so sit down and relax to. Um, I started the habitation throw and I did with my uh, advent skeins, I mean. And I got through all the Prisoner of Azkaban um, and now I'm starting on the night bus. So that should be fun. It's a fairly easy pattern. Um, I'm satisfied with it so far. I think it's going well. I'm just excited to do something with that. Uh, this morning I worked on, um, sorry, the dogs are eating. So sorry if you hear crunching. So this morning I worked on a pair of socks that I'm almost done. Uh, if I can <laughs> unzip it, uh, put you down for a second. Uh, I already have one sock done, so I'm working on the second. This morning I turned the heel and finished the gusset. Right? Is that the right phrase? <laughs> uh, turned the heel and worked the gusset? I don't know. Um, but yes, so we got that. So now I just have to do like 50, 50 or more rows, 50 so rows, I mean. And then I, I'll do the uh, the toe, and then these socks will be done, obviously, after weaving in the ends and blocking. So there's that. Um, I had the intentions of restarting that hat again, but it just didn't happen. So I'll start that after I finish these socks, which I hope to get done tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow or Wednesday. Today's Monday, by the way. 
Um, so I think that is about it. Um, I'm going back over to my parents' house. I'm gonna have dinner with my sister and her two of her friends and my cousin. We're all getting together and getting sushi, which should be yummy. Ordering out sushi, bringing it home. Um, if my sister has a favorite spot in Maryland that my dad's gonna um, pick up from, and it'll just be nice. I just stepped on Blue's toes, I'm sorry. <laughs> she likes to sit right behind me, look. Right? You're such a mess. You're such a mess. She says, give me attention, give me attention. Here's my outfit of the day. My, uh, my boneyard shawl and my, uh, the more I talk about it, I believe, I, I'm 90% sure it's the Frodo colorway from um, Bumblebee Acres. I don't know if it's still in circulation or whatever the term is, if it's still being dyed, but I like it a lot. And then I just got a little mock turtleneck and it's nice and comfy. I've been in, I like this outfit a lot and I'll definitely wear it again. And I finally, and I made those cookies by the way. And I, I believe I put in some shots of that, but that's just been my day today. Uh, I'm not looking forward to going back to work tomorrow. <laughs> I've been enjoying this day off. Um, so again, I'll let you go and I will talk to you later. Hi guys, it is Tuesday, December 8th and it's day eight of Vlogmas. So just got home from work. I changed into my comfy Sherpa um, quarter button. <laughs> uh, again, May is crying because she does this thing where she knows how to go up the stairs, but then she conveniently forgets <laughs> so that I can pick her up. So let me uh, go get her, otherwise she's gonna cry the whole time. Here she is, and here's Blue. But yes, this is my airy Sherpa quarter button top because it is very cold here in Delaware, I mean, Comparatively, I mean, like it's not like Canada cold or like <laughs> uh, like Vermont or Maine cold or uh, Chicago cold, but it is. It was bitingly. Let right is that the right way to say it, it was very. It was it, it like bit yeah <laughs> like it was surprising. Um, so and where I work, I have two doors on either side of my desk that go outside. And uh, so it was freezing, just constant draft. And I have a little uh, space heater that's by my feet, but it only warms my feet. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was my day today um, at work. So we're open up day number eight. It's chaotic here in this bedroom. I literally just got home and changed. And these dogs, they're, <laughs> they're, they're happy that I'm home and then also ready for me to feed them. <laughs> It's like, but priorities, yarn comes first. You can survive another two minutes. I know you can. Might be longer <laughs> with how I'm opening this up. I almost finished a pair of socks today. My plan is to finish them tonight so I can get it done with. And then I'm gonna move on to other projects. So here we go, day number eight. Ooh, right, isn't it pretty? They all go, ooh. This is a uh, talons and tea leaves. So pretty. Oh my goodness. I love the, the purple in there. Mm, it's gonna look so great with a blanket. I love it a lot. Um, I, I could totally see myself buying a full skein or two of this, just like I did with the Professor Lupin colorway, which is still my favorite. Um, so I'm gonna ball this up and, um, and then I'm gonna feed them. <laughs> so I'll let you guys go and I'll talk to you guys later. Again, it is um, about an hour later and I just finished a pair of socks. Um, these are a Christmas present. 
Um, they come up as like kind of pink on camera, but they're red. Um, they're in Schaffenmeyer Premium Yak. I think it's a four ply uh, sock weight. Um, apologize if you hear my um, washer running. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it was just like, I didn't go off any pattern. I just, you know, did a one by one rib for the cuff, a slip stitch um, heel or heel flap and gusset. Um, there's a little hole there I need to patch up. And then just a standard toe. Um, nothing too fancy. They do the job. It is for a man's foot. So um, hopefully they fit. <laughs> uh, I'm super nervous about knitting socks for other people. Um, I'm always afraid that they're gonna be too big or too small. Like I, like I knit a bunch of socks for Christmas presents this year and two of them were for men outside of these. And um, I'm afraid their feet are about size 10 for a man, and I'm afraid they're gonna be too long. <laughs> I don't know, I'm really nervous about it. And then, um, well, with my husband, he is, we have the same foot size, basically. Like, it translates like men, like woman size to men size. So I can knit a pair of socks and put it on my foot and says, okay, this feels about right and then give it to him and they fit him perfectly um but yeah for other people who have larger feet than me or smaller feet I'm like guessing because <laughs> like I take a look at you know I always look up I'm like okay how big is you know a size 8 or or maybe a size 10 because I'm a size 8 a size 10 foot in a woman and I look at it, I'm like that looks way too big <laughs> or like it ends up being way too big like when I first started knitting socks for myself I just went off like okay a size eight foot and um those socks that I knit for the first time they're too long so I don't know I'm it's just it's, I don't know I would prefer to have a tighter sock than a than a floppy sock on the end of the toe you know but that's just me so we'll see I think my husband is home and May May is growling so I'm gonna let you guys go and I'll talk to you later I am back on my couch. I am watching It's Always Sunny and I am knitting my habitation throw and this project is highly addictive. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where it's like oh I just have a couple more projects and or a couple more rows until the pattern and then I'll do the pattern and then I'll stop. Well like several rows later. <laughs> um, I've got done like one and a half of the skeins, um, of the advent skeins tonight. Um, I'm in the middle of the orange one that's um, Crookshanks. And then I have Scabbers. So I'm, I'm coming along with it, but I'm also like, oh man, I could have worked on something else uh, besides that. Um, I haven't touched my pajama cardigan since Sunday. Yes. Uh, well, it's Tuesday. It hasn't been too long. Um, and I also want to get that hat started. But now that I'm finished with the socks, I'll probably do the hat tomorrow, or at least get started on it tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is another, um, it's like 11 and a half hour day tomorrow at work. Um, and then I go straight from work to a Bible study that I have every other Wednesday. So it's gonna be a very long day <laughs> tomorrow, um, but it'll be worth it in the end. Um, yeah, what is keeping you guys busy nowadays? Um, like the holidays are obviously very different this year because of obvious reasons. Um, normally, I mean, I do have a couple things planned that haven't really been affected because of certain things this year um, that are still happening, which is good. Um, trying to make the most of it. Um, normally around this time, like my weekends would be absolutely jam packed and I would be preparing for those weekends in various ways, but it's not as elevated this year. And I think that 
my body's like confused <laughs> because I've just been very uneasy and on edge and stressed and just not feeling myself. Uh, normally I thrive in, um, you know, I thrive in um, like when I'm busy, basically. Um, and this time of the year is normally very, very busy and like come like Christmas or the day after Christmas, I'm just so exhausted. But yeah, like this year, like I'm just not that busy. And I'm not like, yeah, like I'm not running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So now I'm like, well, now what do I do? <laughs> and um, I don't know, like, how do you guys feel about all this? Are you normally busy this time of year and now because of everything that's happened in 2020? that isn't really the case and like how are you handling that are you enjoying it or do you miss it like I do um sorry to get a little bit deep and emotional on you guys but um just being honest here you know just opening up getting to know each other um that's just how I am I guess um so I decided that I'm gonna put this down for the night I did that pattern section <laughs> And uh, I think I'll do a couple more rows on my, um, on the, uh, the pajama cardigan. Anyway, so what I was trying to say before I got cut off was that I'll see you guys first thing in the morning tomorrow um, because I won't be home for more than for a very long time. So we'll do Advent's first thing in the morning tomorrow and then... I'll go to work, go to women's group, and I probably won't talk after that. Maybe. We'll see unless something happens. But I just wanted to send you off instead of cutting it off. So, alright. Will you guys enjoy the rest of your night? And I will talk to you tomorrow. Hey guys, just sitting here, hanging out in my car. Um, I had a long day at work. I ended up going in uh, earlier than I planned, but I got to leave a little bit, but that meant I got to leave earlier than anticipated. Um, so on alternating Wednesdays, I go to a Bible study held at my church. And so I am waiting for that. Um, it doesn't start until seven and it's 6.30. So I'm just hanging. I'm not really hungry, so I didn't even like, I didn't stop to get food or anything. Um, I could be knitting, but I decided to talk to you guys instead. Big old truck. And, um, yeah. Not much really happened today. I worked on the brim of a hat. I have it. On that, uh, the hat that I started making at the beginning of Vlogmas, and then, um, messed up <laughs> so uh i worked on the brim of that it took longer than anticipated because you know it was one of those brims where you had to knit twice as long then fold it over and pick up the stitches um it did call for a provisional cast on but i decided not to mess with that this time so here it is um so instead of doing the provisional provisional cast on i like picked up as I went. Um, I tried picking it up on a second set of needles um, and it just wasn't working out. Um, it is slightly wonky but I know like once you actually wear it like it won't be that big of a deal. And I have my little forest charm stitch marker on it. The colors work very well with this. Um, you'll be able to see it better like in actual light soon. Uh, but that's what I worked on today. And during my long days at work, I have a lot of time to contemplate life. 
because it's a lot of nothing. Part of my job is a lot of nothing, um, which is both nice and also frustrating. And um, so I was thinking about how, because, you know, I'm getting ready to go to this Bible study tonight, and I love hanging out with these women, but um, since since I can remember, I've had really bad social anxiety. But as I've gotten older and I've learned to deal with my anxiety and depression different ways and, you know, how it manifests differently, I can never, I have never really gotten over my social anxiety, um, which I find to be different than regular anxiety. So I have a friend who understands this. We actually talk about it often, but I often, I always second guess myself. I tend to feel as if like I've reverted back to my high school state and we all remember <laughs> what we thought about ourselves and we knew about ourselves um, in hindsight when we were in high school we were all very awkward right very awkward very cringy like I don't like to think about my life before I met my husband <laughs> even times during my husband I, during the time when I met my husband I was very cringe and I, I'm surprised he stuck with me <laughs> through it all um but I revert back to the state you know that high school state of mind where like everyone's looking at me everyone thinks that I'm cringy no one wants to be around me like they just are talking with me out of obligation or um or like oh Caitlin's talking to me so now I have to sit here and endure a conversation with her you know like and I I feel very self-conscious throughout the whole thing and then as soon as I as soon as I get back in my car and I'm driving home, like I can't even pay attention to the podcast I'm listening to or anything because all I can think about is all the little things I did wrong and like how I made that conversation awkward or I shouldn't have asked that question or I shouldn't have answered that question that way or you know like things like that and it's I feel like it's gotten heightened especially now because as I've grown up I mean, back in high school and college, I was textbook introvert. Um, and I, you know, very much, and I, and I, you know, leaned into that. <laughs> like, you know, how you learn your, your Myers-Briggs, you know, personality or your Enneagram and you lean into that, <laughs> uh, whether intentionally or not. But um, I leaned into the fact that I was an introvert and on top of my depression and anxiety, it just felt right. But as I've gotten older, I've learned that I'm becoming more and more extroverted and I want to hang out with people. I want to take girlfriends to go get coffee or to go to Philadelphia and hang out for the day or, you know, just do fun things like that or like reach out to them and ask them. Instead of them asking me, I'm asking them on my own accord hey, been thinking about you today. Do you want to go get coffee? Or do you want to go get lunch? Or, you know, I would love to hang out. Let's have a glass of wine. You know, like something, you know, like that. And I guess it goes back to the whole thing that I want people to like me, which isn't, you know, healthy because <laughs> not everyone's going to like you. And I'm, and I'm trying to learn that. But I don't know. Like, like, I wish I could just enjoy life. You know, I wish I could just just go through life without worrying about what people think and you know that you know a friend or someone you want to be friends with taking four days to respond back to a text asking if you want to go out to coffee with them like that shouldn't bother me you know but it does um you know happy vlogmas super festive talking about mental health and anxiety that's all we want during this time, right? Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, like, I'm not doing, like, I'm not, like, not doing all kinds of festive stuff right now. Um, there isn't a lot to do in my area. Um, I'm hoping next week to be able to do a little bit more. Um, the week of Christmas, I won't be working, so maybe I'll be able to do a little bit more than just show you my advents. Um, I am having fun filming and editing for the most part and posting and getting to interact with you guys and you know I, and again here comes the anxiety again like you know is is this worth doing are people enjoying it like um 
I'm really boring, <laughs> you know, like, uh, I did have someone comment along, like, you know, a couple months ago, or a couple weeks ago, a couple podcast episodes ago, and they called me boring, they said I was boring, and I'm like, and I guess that just continues to linger in the back of my head, like, yeah, maybe, like, I'm boring, like, I'm not, like, I don't know, like, I look at people, like, like, like other, not just knitting podcasters, but like general vlogness, like, you know, vlogging people and they're going cutting down their Christmas tree and they're going to look at Christmas lights and they're, you know, going out and about and going on hikes and like, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, I go to work, come home. I sit on my couch because it's too dark to do anything. Or I have like chores that I have to do at home. And by the time everything's done, like it's eight o'clock or whatever. And um, you know, I knit a few rows of whatever I'm working on and then I'm done and then we repeat it the next day. I don't know. It's just a lot of junk. There's a lot of stuff going on in my head and, um, just trying to handle it the best that I can, I guess. It is almost seven o'clock, so now I'm just waiting for people to roll up. Mm, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So I'll let you guys go. Um, I don't know if I'll talk to you tonight, but maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow. Or, or I will talk to you tomorrow. If I don't talk to you tonight, I will definitely talk to you tomorrow. And that I was trying to say. Uh, Alright, I will talk to you guys later. Hey guys, it is December 10th. <laughs> 10th day of Vlogmas. Um, I just got back from work. I changed into this like light sweater thing. And um, I'm about to get some chores done around the house. Um, you don't hear the dogs because the dogs aren't here. Um, my in-laws decided to take the dogs for the weekend. Uh, they tend to do that. They take the dogs on a little sleepover uh, for like a weekend or so. Both because they love them to death and it also gives my husband and I a break. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what's going on today. Um, but I'm going to get started with... Whoop, with... Um, opening today's advent. See how that all looks. I have a couple other things to share with you while I'm sitting here too, but we'll get started with this. Come on. This is Buckbeak the Hippogriff. Very cool. I like the color combination. We have a little button with Buckbeak. So pretty. I feel like these colors really represent him well. Uh, See, so yeah, I'm excited to get that into the, um, uh, the throw blanket. So, uh, so yeah, so today I got a good amount of my hat done. I don't think I've shown you this bag before. Um, I recently got this. It was like a pre-order a month or so ago, and uh, it was from Ritual Dyes in Portland, one of my favorite um, indie dyers. And I don't know, I just love the bag. I thought it was so cool, and I like I like how big it is. It has a really nice zipper. It's lovely. So I am working on the Lenny hat, and that is by Isabella Kramer or is it Isabel Kramer? Pardon me. So I finished the pattern section. Now I'm just working on the crown until I have to decrease. So here we go. It did have the option, the option to add bobbles, but I decided not to. But it has like a cute little tree motif. I like it. And I like the color. And this is a, a ritual dyes. Um, uh, one part, um, they're, they're maiden base. Uh, which is Ramula wool, and then their fay base, which is their mohair, their mo silk mohair, and this is they're both in the color um, chestnut. And I bought this, and I made my first my first ever sweater, my cozy classic raglan, in this um, in these colors, and I have I have about this much left in these two skeins and then I have full skeins of each one more full skein so I figured I would use it to make a hat for my dear friend and this will be a Christmas present for her um 
And then we got our little uh, Forest Charms um, stitch marker. And I feel like it works well with this color. I like it a lot. So my hands are a little stiff from working on that today. But I, I really liked how I got this motif. You basically um, hold the yarn in front and slip stitch and then uh, two rows later you like knit it into there. Like I like it and like this like opens up so many new possibilities. Um, yeah, I thought it was cool. So that's what I've been working on as of late. I'd like to have it done by this weekend, just, just to have it done. Um, and then I also want to talk about, so I've been thinking a lot about Huga, Huga, <laughs> you saw me struggling with this a while ago. I've been thinking about it and the idea has been a little bit of an obsession of mine. I'm um, just trying to learn more about it, how to incorporate it more in my life. So I bought the little book of Huga, Huga, uh, by Mike. Make, make, wicking, um, or pronounced huga. There we go. Um, so I figured I would get this and just it's kind of like a Marie Kondo like um, kind of book, or it's like small but like and like it's like a quick read. So I got myself this, and I also got a copy for um, someone whose general aesthetic for my is very huga, um, very cozy, very warm. And um, I figured I would give that to them uh, along with their other Christmas gift as like a little something extra, maybe something to put on their coffee table or something just to flip through, something to inspire them maybe. Um, but yeah, I might um, spend some time with this today too. Oh, we'll see. Uh, if not today, then maybe this weekend. Um, today or this afternoon, it's going to be a little busy. Um, we have Stanley Steamer coming tomorrow just for, a, you know, a bi-yearly <laughs> carpet cleaning um, with dogs that's needed, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to be doing, so we have that. So I have to prepare the main room that they're working on. So I have to take out a bunch of furniture, I have to vacuum hardcore, like just as a courtesy, you know, so I'll be doing that. I also have a pile of laundry that I have to get through. I think it's like two weeks worth of laundry and I've just been like digging through it and I'm putting it on my bed in the morning and saying like, okay, I'm going to take care of that when I get home. And then I get home and then I move it back onto my little bench and like that off. It'll happen another night like it doesn't need to happen right now <laughs> but now it definitely does so i'll be doing that and i had to run a couple of errands tonight um we have a uh, sort of like a little christmas party get together thing that we're doing tomorrow with some of the kids in our youth group they've been waiting all year for this um so we're gonna bless. we're gonna um do that um, so yeah, we're just preparing for that. Um, it'll be, it's going to be easy. This is our third youth group Christmas party that we've done. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And the kids are definitely looking forward to it. Um, they love the white elephant exchange. We always have fun with that. Um, there's several games that we like to play. So we'll, we'll have fun. Uh, responsibly, we'll have fun. Um, what else are we doing tonight? Uh, I think that might be it. Um, I'm hoping to get a few more rows on my um, pajama cardigan done tonight. Um, yeah, I didn't really knit anything when I got home after my Bible study last night. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, so I'll let you go. Maybe I'll talk to you later. And um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.
Hi everyone, it is Friday, December 11th, and I had recorded uh, something earlier to catch you guys up on what I was doing, but then I went to watch it back. Apparently I recorded all in slow motion for some reason. Uh, I recorded it while driving, so I don't know, maybe that like caused it to be weird. Um, so I worked half a day today as I normally do on Fridays. Um, oh, and also apologies for the face situation. Um, my my acne fluctuates, but it's like it gets it the masks make it worse basically. So this week was another bad week for my face. I'm sorry, and I don't tend to wear makeup all the time because it just makes my acne worse. So like I can't win. Um, but anyway, worked half the day today, and then I drove up a half an hour north, and I met a friend for coffee, and we had coffee for about an hour. And I started going back south and I stopped at Target and I braved Target <laughs> and now I'm back home. And um, so yeah, I have an hour and a half until uh, our youth group Christmas party, which I need to get ready for. But I wanted to give you guys a bit of an update on that. Otherwise, I will uh, talk to you later. Hi guys. So... I just came back from a Christmas party, hence my ugly sweater. It has a llama on it. There was another, uh, there was another girl at the youth group who also had a llama sweater. So we were um, twins that, tonight. Uh, so I decided, because I'm not tired enough, that I'm gonna show you my collection of vintage Christmas records. So I'm gonna start with this one. Ella wishes you a swinging Christmas. Um, the this print isn't vintage, but I love the the album uh, art is gorgeous. Um, it's probably one of my favorites. I love Ella Fitzgerald, regardless. Um, and her just doing Christmas album just like makes her even better. And um, you might be able to see it behind me, but the album is white, which just adds to the aesthetic. So that's Ella. And then we have another classic, Merry Christmas from Bing Crosby. Uh, all the classics are on here. Uh, the, the, most of the first side is like um, classic, uh, like Christian Christmas music. And then the other side is a little bit more secular. Um, but yes, also a classic album cover. You see this everywhere. Next we have Barbra Streisand. In my home, Barbra Streisand's Christmas album was a staple. It wasn't this one specifically, it was the one from the 90s, I believe. Uh, it's like an all red album cover and she's sitting on a chase lounge being Barbra Streisand. Um, but uh, this, this one is from the 70s, I believe. The way she looks in this album cover is very um, 70s, maybe late 60s. Uh, just says a Christmas album. Um, there's just something about Barbra Streisand and Christmas that it's just a perfect combination. Now we have the Andy Williams Christmas album and I have a lovely relationship with Andy Williams and his Christmas album. Um, every year we had a similar Andy Williams Christmas album. It was a live album. Uh, this one isn't live. But um, the day after Thanksgiving, every year, my mom would turn on the Andy Williams Christmas album and we had a giant stereo and she would blast it through the whole house um, with his rendition of it's the most wonderful time of the year. And it would radiate throughout the whole home and all of his kids would wake up and run downstairs and you know start putting up the Christmas tree and that's when we knew it was Christmas was when we heard Andy throughout the home. All these Christmas albums I got at uh, my local record shop. It's called Rainbow Records. It's in Newark, Delaware. Um, and every year, um, aside from this year because of COVID, uh, they have a lovely Christmas album display and I always grab a couple. Uh, we got some Johnny Mathis. I don't listen to this one nearly as much, but he's another staple for Christmas. We love the classic Christmas. Then we have another Bing Crosby. 
Um, this one um, has a couple more, uh, let's see, like it's mostly secular, but there is other um, Christian Christmas classics. Um, this one doesn't get played as much as the other one in my home, but I do love the album cover. Um, it's very uh, puka, <laughs> very uh, warm and friendly and inviting. A little artwork on the back is cute too with Santa and the reindeer. Nice. All right. And then we have Perry Como. Again, another Christmas classic, Christmas great. Um, I think I've only listened to this album once, if I'm being honest. But it has the classics um, on there. Little back album work is cute too with the little houses. And trees. Um, we have a collection. Christmas America. Uh, Bing Crosby, Glenn Campbell, Peggy Lee, Nat King Cole, Dinah Shore, Dean Martin, Tennessee Ernie Ford, and Ella Fitzgerald. All the greats. And I have never listened to this one. I bought it um, a few years ago and just have never cracked it open. I guess I should do that soon. And we have two more. Um, got some Johnny Mathis. Very minimal artwork on the back. Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, let's see. And then the final one. Frank Sinatra. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I can't remember if this was a gift or not. And if you gave me this as a gift, I'm very sorry. Or if you're watching this and you gave me this as a gift, I'm sorry that I don't remember. Uh, but uh, Frank Sinatra and his friends. So we got, um, let's see, anyone? We got Sammy Davis Jr. Who else? Dean Martin. Rosemary Clooney, um, George Clooney's aunt, for those of you who don't know. It's the only thing I know about Rosemary Clooney, that and that she was in um, White Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've only ever listened to this one once as well. Things that get played most in this house are Ella, Bing, and um, Andy Williams. So that is something I wanted to leave you off with at the end of this vlogmas week too. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully I, I'm able to do more holiday-like stuff next week uh, to keep things a little bit more interesting. Um, I'm going to put this out on Sunday and um, I guess I'll just leave it here. So um, enjoy your week, stay safe, keep knitting, and I will see you later. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas.